We have a most uh, militarized and security approach on when we talk about drug policies in, in Brazil and maybe in Latin America, maybe in the world. I would like to know your point of view regarding this, this talk. How should we address this? Well, you know, I have done a report on that. Um, and I, I believe that the origins of the sin, as it were, uh, lay in the cultural roots of Christianity and Islam. Because drug taking of particular types, alcohol, you can drink as much as you want, you can kill by accidents, direct connection between taking alcohol and killing people on the road. But that's all and now that's legal. Smoking, you have a international convention that you must educate. But if you take a narcotic drug or a psychotropic substance as we call it, uh, it may be coca which you chew in Bolivia or it may be cannabis which is traditionally taken on a particular day to celebrate the Lord, the, the great Lord Shiva. You know, there's the day called Mahashivaratri in India where all believers, they actually drink bang which has got cannabis in it, including my father-in-law who recently died. And I spoke about this in the UN General Assembly. And I said, you know, my father-in-law, I asked him, why do you take bang, which is cannabis based? He said, you know, I like this particular Indian sweets called Rosh Gulas. And he loved them, loved them. He is no longer with us. And he said, I like to, normally I can only eat two. If I eat four, I get indigestion. But if I take bang, I can take 20 and I have no problems at all. Now, that is not allowed because those people who came from the West said, this is not a good idea. And they initially traded on it. So the British traded in, in opium, sent opium to China. Three wars were fought to, to allow for accumulation of capital. Some of the Indian big wigs, including capitalists, traded in that and made money and accumulated capital. But today it's com criminalized. First of all, it's a cultural outlook. Secondly, Criminalization doesn't deter people from taking drugs. You know, recreational drugs are increasing. Criminalization of that has actually increased the use of taking drugs. Trafficking has increased. You see the results of that in, uh, in uh, not only in Mexico but in Colombia, in this region. Areas are controlled by criminals. So what have you done? You have increased the number of people who are taking drugs. They don't have an idea about how to treat overdose because you don't have information available publicly. They don't realize the difference between taking a glass of wine and drinking a whole bottle every day. It's the same. You can take a bit of cannabis and take it for the whole of your life without any deleterious consequences as you take alcohol. So they don't know the difference. Dependence and taking it casually as it were. So they cannot treat dependence, which is a medical condition. And instead they are being criminalized and they are put behind bars. It's not working. The strategy of war against the drugs initiated by the United States, unfortunately, is completely failed and I've said that. Now, what is the way out? The way out is shown by Portugal as an example. They have decriminalized possession. And has crime gone up? No. It has actually gone significantly down. So you have an example which tells you, but you don't want to do it because you believe in a dogma. The drugs are bad. But you don't treat each drug the same way. You have your own preferences. So the whole thing is plainly stupid, but it has very bad consequences in terms of lives being taken of people. I think this is necessary to stop it.